at the time he knew what he saw in the water yeah. and what it looked like. So he was roofing through encyclopedias and books and whatever information them. was available at the time to say, well, what was it? Do you know? And, and so... And all you got was box jellyfish. And of course, the only bit of stuff you got was on Australia. You, you couldn't find anything else out there. So for years, and particularly for years, because the internet didn't come, when was that? <laughs> 95 we started to see glimmers of it in 98 so for all those years i really had other than encyclopedias or physically going back to the island which we did you just couldn't get information other than your all you'd heard about close to us in australia was a box jellyfish and you had a photograph of that particular one so i used to say what's a box jellyfish and of course all we knew was that it's it can kill and it's dangerous so i used the photograph of the box jellyfish in australia and i of course said well it can kill in three minutes and, and of course I mean, I could have died had it hit me in the throat, I know. And these fishermen jelly, if it hit you in the throat, you're dead in those minutes. That, I always you... called it, I always yeah. called it en visible, which is what they call it. But when you try and say en visible to the average Western English-speaking mind, well, what is that? When you say Mardus, <laughs> which is what they used also as a generic jellyfish name, well, Mardus, whatever. I mean, is it blubber jellyfish, what type? Yeah. And so the fact it was cube-shaped, this is what, when I began to study and research, I thought that's exactly what it was. I'd watched every Jacques Cousteau program on TV. I'd even want to be a marine biologist. So my understanding of looking at it as a lifeguard and studying this stuff, it, it, I knew it had to be a box jellyfish. Mm. The question was, was, and then of course when I was out there, again, this time, it is. But of course what I'm finding, of course, as years go by and the internet now becomes much more um, open, you realise that, oh my gosh, there are many species of the box jellyfish, so it's not the exact yeah. one in Australia. But as the toxicology, as the power of it, as poisonous, well, it may not be as deadly because that is known to be the deadliest, but the fact was that the other species of the box jellyfish in Thailand and Indonesia mm -hmm. are killing. Yeah. Okay? And so when you, when you had nothing done by, the, by that government or by the Mauritian government on it, then of course, or the Marine Department, then of course you're left in a bit of a quandary. You are now caught in a catch-22 knowing it's a deadly jellyfish, knowing when you talk to these fishermen that it it's, takes, takes you out. What is it? And I said to them, why on earth don't they do it? And they laughed. They said, of course, because they don't want to affect tourism. When you when you paint it as the top end tourist island for the elite and for the wealthy it's something you really want to paint as paradise and I understand that I don't want to affect the tourism because the reality is no matter where you go there's potential for death and that can come from drowning that can come from heart attack and just and so uh, and talking to them thing, you know, it? even talking to it's the not fishermen. a well it's was not a freak it? thing it's not when I talk to them this time it's not a freak thing mm -hmm. they were basically saying that it's a, there is a lot of fishermen a lot of people but because the fishermen wear wetsuits they know about it they're told they of course are much more wary of it they pull Carry, carry, carry full wetsuits, rubber hoods, booties. But even talking to them this time, what was amazing, they said, Ian, even as you take your mask off, <laughs> even though you've got all the wetsuit, they've still been hit, and Dadoon had been hit in the lip and nearly killed. In fact, fortunately, an army doctor had spared his life. And Simona talked about it, how it'd get around the ankles, the, the swelling of the current of the, of the, and he was saying, very hard to see. And they were saying, yes, it is dangerous, and, and of course, it will kill and very very powerful and Simon had nearly died he'd been hit by them so had Dadoon so for me this time mm -hmm. seeing that two of my friends had literally nearly died in fact would not be with us had it not been for an army doctor in the village giving them antitoxin on the spot both of these very strong fishermen would have died on died in Tamarin Bay and I wouldn't have anyone to go and see. So you had a translator there? Yeah Roger Teveno was one of the French Mauritians. His family lived in the village for years and of course um, I found out later he's given his life to the Lord and is very on fire for the Lord and had been reaching out for, to a number of people and so meeting Roger again and staying with him and his wife Albain, Albain was really really good because he was able to help translate some of the stuff that was taking place with Simon and with um, with with um, ten, and so actually to talk to them and to actually interact with them was quite a, a special time. Simon, yeah. when you were hit, how, how many hit you? 
comer alguma vez em two shots of country country chicken. Oh, I think because no, I was there. Me? With him. You were there. How many do you think he was hit by? Eh? How many do you yeah, think? Yeah, about 50. Three. He was hit all over his body, yeah. huh? You know, because wow. I gotta grab him, I gotta do everything, that's me. You know, because me and him, like, we brothers. partners, brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, diving and everything, you know, <laughs> we are good divers. You know. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta grab him and I said, no. And what happened to him? He was shaking? Yeah, he was shaking, he's like a, I mean, like a... He nearly passed away wow. in front of me. Wow. You know, I get it. I put, I, I put him in the boat, you know, and then he just got and stop. <laughs> I said, oh, no oh, shit. Oh, man. This is gone. No. Quick, 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 quick. You know, you get 15 horsepower or, or whatever. Yeah. And something like that, you know. You, you got to get him to that. That's that, right. You know? At least so, you had a motor. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I said, just gone. Yep. As soon we got a. The show, yes. You know, so we just eat the show, and then I can grab him and put it in some way. Someone can help me, you know. So I just got him, da 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 da, da bring him to hospital, you know. And wow. He was, and they, they give him, they give him an anti serum. Yes. They give him anti poison, anti serum. Yep. For After the jellyfish. That, you know, because he was in my place first, you know. Because we, and after yeah. we organize everything, you know, yeah. so we put him in the carpet, you know, carpet is sweating and all this shit. He told me yesterday that the carpet just like, it was like a tap, like Car a hose pipe and it was carpet like is just like water a coming out of the, uh, of the carpet. Out of the carpet, yeah. you know, I said, oh no, 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 I, I uh, don't have to my brother. And, Sim yeah. and Simon, you shake? You go like this. You feel like this. I was, when I was here, terrible, huh? And then I went very cold. You went I, cold, cold. I said I'm freezing, freezing, huh? Five minutes. He was freezing. That's why, that's why they put the carpet around him. To keep him warm. To keep him warm. Well, they did this in the hotel here. They put blankets around me. When Danielle carried me, because he's sweating. He's sweating. I was sweating, and then I went so cold, and then I can feel in my bone like death, huh? Like cold death in the bone marrow from the feet. That's why I'm sweating. Yeah, That's right. Well, we, I did die, but we, 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 we will die again. <laughs> we will die one day. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, your heart too. Heart, your heart. Yeah, yeah. And I paralyzed me. I couldn't move. The it was like, pa like paralyzed. Yeah. You can't see everything. Just yeah. Blocking. And I could feel. Roger, everything is just... Everything is just... You know, you felt like to... He was vomiting and diarrhea and all that, everything just went out. Wow. And then they gave him anti-serum, huh? Yeah, yeah. Thank God to Dr. Kitting that saved his life. And Dudun's life. And Dudun's life also Dr. Kitting. And it was an anti-toxin, huh? Yep. They yeah, have special for this was jellyfish, huh? Army, army doctor. Ah. He was an army doctor. Army doctor. Right. You know, and where was he, he? got everything. So he had the he had the antitoxin for yep. this jellyfish. Yep. Yeah. So he he knows this jellyfish. He knew all that. You know, army doctor. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna mention that. So but it was amazing guy. Uh, Simon say and Marie Jimon, he's Marie an Jimon, amazing yeah. guy. Uh, doctor Kitting. Yeah. Where doctor. where is he? Doctor. Is he in Catrabol? No, 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 he's not going to walk with us. Rivian, what? Tamaran. And so he had First the... to where you were staying. And he I had... was working with him. And he had uh, the anti-serum, huh? Yep. He was working with Dr. Kitty. I Kitchen. was working with him. Ah. So um, this man knew this this jellyfish. Yeah, he knew everything. How, how come? How come we find no evidence of this in Mauritius? How come no one talks about this? Why they why why they not talk about this? Don't ask me questions. It's all people like He's not allowed to because maybe I can open a lies. Okay. Because you think tourism? Okay, let me just so you cannot say anything. I cannot say anything about that. 
Uh, this is the reason why I can find nothing on the internet. That's the reason why you can't find anything. Just try yourself. Yes. Watch out. Get, get the good reason of Aaron, you know. Why is that happen in Mauritius? Mm. That's my, uh, my question. Think but about I, it. I can't but see, Dudum, for me, from New Zealand, yeah. huh? we, I know what happened to me with Simona. Yeah. And I have people say, ah, oh, you lie. There's no record. There's no he's evidence. Not gonna, he's not going to be stopped anyway. But you know it's going to be. It's going to happen it's again. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. When are we going to stop it? When? Well, because oh, tourists, know. tourists oh. must be hit by this too. Yeah, tourists is more tourists in Mauritius. And they you must know, be hit but, by these jellyfish too. Uh, Come on. If he's a tourist. If he dies at night. If he dives at he night, dies at night he the jellyfish come at night. Yeah. Yeah. He talked to me, a lot of them would say it's at night here. It seems to come in from the north around Grand Bay and then come down the west coast down as far as uh, almost Suliak, but particularly down to Le Mans. Mm -hmm. Now of course the divers and fishermen, because it's an outer reef, they're saying of course the reef keeps a lot of these jellyfish out from coming into the lagoon where most tourists, most held ho hotels are. So the prevalence during the day of them coming across the reef is rare. But those who are diving on the outer reef, and of course the, the fishermen do that, very few tourists do that, okay? And when they do dive, of course, now they know that it's very dangerous. They're getting people to put full wetsuits on. And they're, of course, even putting warning systems in place, but they didn't have when I was there in 1982. I found out now from the fishermen that there are warning places where the government now warns the public, warns the people, and closes the beaches when these jellyfish come. But, of course, there are different species of jellyfish. I was talking to one of the Chinese guys who was actually a dive instructor, and I put some of his stuff on, my, on the internet, um, one of the emails he sent to me. Unfortunately, didn't get an actual uh, a video of talking to him. But this particular guy had been hit by them. He described how the size of them. He said that purple streak through it. Some talk blue, purple. And said, this one hit me. My gosh, nearly killed me. Hasn't been able to go back in from the from into the water, and has actually get another job. And he himself identified it as a box jellyfish. Um, and so I hear the local guys call it like Invisab. On Visab, as you go north they call it Le Globe. Yeah. So what was interesting, the northern Creoles, because no one's identified it, okay, there's no when I went to the Ministry of Fisheries to talk to them, he said there's no money for research Ian. We we don't unless someone sponsors this or pays for this. I said, Why hasn't there been any research on this? He said, Well we know about it, but there's no research done when I talked to when I talked to the guys at Albion. Because for me, I did want to talk to the to the hospitals. I did want to talk to the uh, Ministry of Fisheries. I wanted to talk to them uh, and find out what what I kept finding when I talked to the people who weren't in the, in key positions. Yes, it's here. Yes, it's dangerous. When I got to the top end of the um, professional people, it appeared to be a much more well. People react differently. Mm, um, we we have anti serum and and well it's not good to dive at night <laughs> but a bit of a smoke screen going up and I and I can understand particularly why they do that mm -hmm. I'm sure that's uh, that's trying to not scare potential tourists away from the island because if people hear the name box jellyfish it's a lot different from hearing the word on which in the French is an invisible one or la globe or Mardus. Medusa in French is a generic name for the jellyfish or any form of jellyfish. But to specifically identify which Mardus is in the ocean of Mauritius and that it has capacity to kill, and I think when you look at Winnipedia you see over 36 different species of jellyfish, box jellyfish. And you read in Thailand it's killing, Malaysia it's killing, Diego Garcia killing, uh, Maldives. So right above us and even in South Africa, all around us we have evidence of people being killed by box jellyfish. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to actually find very little, if nothing, on the internet, because <laughs> everyone becomes an expert once they do a Google search. Yeah, yeah. It's fascinating. <laughs> um, and find that there's nothing necessarily there on Mauritius. For me, actually going back this time to the island, I'm going, well, either I'm deceived and either I'm completely wrong or I'm a liar, 
or this stuff actually took place and this stuff's real. So for me, without a shadow of a doubt, interviewing these people, talking to them, for my own peace of mind, because hey mate, if you're wrong and deceived, the last thing you want to do yeah. as a Christian is to yeah. lie and deceive people. I mean, hello, you stand before God on this kind of stuff. And so I wanted to have assurance in my heart, forget proving it to anyone else, I wanted to know that I know that I know that this thing does exist. And I think coming away from it this time, I know that no I know doubt. that I know, yeah. I don't have a shadow of a doubt in my heart that that particular species is in that island it's well known amongst the community and Mauritian people and it is a very dangerous jellyfish and does kill and has killed